part 2 of the claimed lung curve route covers the section from the 6th to the 12th kilometer. If you intend driving this route, it's important to watch part 1 first, which contains important information relating to navigation, historical and tourism matters. At the 5.8 km point, you'll reach the turnoff to the Petersrefeu farm, where you'll discover a pristine nature reserve well worth visiting. Owner and Cape Nature steward, Katot Meyer, is a conservation legend in these parts. There are few people that know more about William Birchall than Katot Meyer. Birchall was a remarkable man, intelligent and meticulous in his plans and travels. He explored this valley as far back as 1811. Nature lovers will recognize names such as Birchall's Zebra, Birchall's Kukul and Birchellia bubalina, a wild pomegranate, all named after the remarkable explorer and naturalist. Birchall traveled 7,000 kilometers of inhospitable terrain by ox wagon in southern Africa between 1811 and 1815, going as far north as the Kuruman district, then on to the mouth of the Great Fish River, before returning to Cape Town via the garden route. His collection of 63,000 specimens of flora and fauna was said to be the largest collection made by one person ever to have left Africa. After he returned to England, two volumes of Birchall's travels in the interior of southern Africa were published in 1822 and 1824, covering the first half of his trip. Volumes covering the rest of his trek, including the garden route, never appeared and have been lost to posterity. Birchall was a multi-talented botanist and naturalist who documented more Southern African species than many more famous early travelers. He was also an excellent artist, geographer, cartographer, linguist, ethnographer, philosopher and early ecologist. Even today, he remains many a nature lover's hero. From Afontir, most gentlemen travellers venturing to Plattenberg Bay took a bridle path down what became Prince Alfred's Pass and sent their wagons with servants along the hazardous route over the Otaniqua Mountains at Devilskop or one of the other passes further west. Ever the intrepid explorer, Birchall stayed with his wagon, his plant press and the thousands of samples he'd collected on his epic trek as they travelled along farmer's sled tracks down the Kyobums River Valley to Plattenberg Bay. Katot Meyer has erected a stone memorial in honor of Birchall. Katot discovered a section of Birchall's route, now a tough 4x4 trail. He said there was a huge fire that swept across the mountains. It left everything bare and I saw these tracks. Consulting old maps, the most accurate the one made by Birchall himself, Katot realized this was the great explorer's actual route. Birchall was the first European visitor to travel by ox wagon along the entire route from the Lungkloof to Mossel Bay via Plattenberg Bay. He and his team successfully negotiated some of the most formidable and dreaded travel obstacles in the Cape Colony at the time. Retracing Birchall's journey through the garden route reminds us that he was the first naturalist intensively to study its flora and fauna, a contribution that has received relatively little attention. The nearest proper town to this route is, of course, Uniondale. It's a small town in the Little Karoo and came about by the joining of two towns, being Hopedale and Lyon, in 1856. It's predominantly a sheep, goat, seed and apple farming community. Uniondale is a great place to spend a few days, travelling and enjoying the Little Karoo scenery. Other than being famous for the Uniondale ghost, the town has many beautifully preserved buildings which include the imposing Dutch Reformed Church and the English fort that stands on a small copy overlooking the town. Together with Willowmore, Uniondale is one of the two springboard towns to the world famous Pavillonskloof. A variety of activities are on offer in the region such as scenic drives, 4x4 trails, guest farms, agritourism, hiking trails, game viewing excursions as well as a rich history. The nearby Sand Valley Game Reserve is blessed with over 500 ancient rock art paintings. At the 8 km point, another road leads off to the right. This leads to a farm called Mkama, which translates into Place of Bliss. At this stage, you've covered roughly one third of the distance. The next 9 km winds in and out of many side ravines that feed into the Kyobums River Valley. Be sure to watch parts 3 and 4 of the Klein Lungloof route.